Okay, so let's think about placing our beams across this now, and we're going to make that bespoke custom uh, beam that's so elo eloquent looking. So we're going to go to File. Sorry, i got to get over to my screen. File. New. Family. Open up the English Imperial, and we're going to look for a structural column. Oops. Sorry. Did I say structural column? I meant to say structural beam. We're going to go ahead and open that. And uh, we'll go to a front elevation. Nope. Let's go to a left elevation where we can see that profile of the beam. And this is parametric. So we're going to go in and edit this. They've already given it some reference lines. And we're going to make some modifications to that. So I'll pull this reference line down. You can see how this shape is connected to it. I want this to be the top of steel. And that's locked to it. That's good. Um, we want to be able to control the width of the beam, so I'm going to add a value here. And if I select this, I can give it a parameter and a new parameter. So I'm going to call it width, excuse me, um, beam width. And I believe if we change this beam width, it's not going to be symmetrical. So let's say I change this to 12. And you'll notice how it's moving the wrong way, or just one to one side. So the fix for this is to actually uh, lock these or constrain these a bit. So I'm going to add a, um, a set of dimensions here. And then I'm just going to make those equal. And then if we uh, go ahead now and try to change the beam width, I believe. Let's change this to um, 10 again it'll move with um, equally. And we also want to establish the idea of a beam depth, so I'm going to give that a parameter. New parameter, beam depth. And we want to have that little funny curve, or that nice curve, so I'm going to delete that line, and we're going to create an arc. And I'm going to lock those so that that curve continues to stay with that. And so let's go ahead and flex this a little bit and see what happens. So I'm going to change this dimension. I'm going to try to. Let's change this to 3. Oops. And it seems to be behaving nicely. So we'll complete that out. And now we have our new, um, we go to a 3D view. We have our new uh, beam system. I'm going to actually, um, I, I should have done this with the column. I'm going to establish a new color for it so that it looks better in rendering. So I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to just call that, I'm going to rename it and call it white. And I'm really not going to give it a value. Um, we're going to do that. Um, in the project folder because the all of them all the components we make that we call white will come into the project folder and get applied to whatever color happens to be established within the project uh, folder so now we have that beam constructed let's go ahead and load that into the project um, we need to oops you know one of the things i wanted to do um, i'm going to cancel out of this a minute i'm going to go back to that beam i haven't saved it with a name I'm going to do a file. I'm going to do a save as a family and um, custom beam. And for me, it's 2023. And we'll go ahead and load that into the project. And now we're ready to place our first custom beam. And we really want to place it at the top of steel. And um, remember, it extends out past um the elements and comes all the way back over to here and it says it's not showing up because we're not on that level but we can go ahead and look at that in 3d view oops not showing up hold on what did we do here oh i maybe need to cancel or grab that warning my warning arrow is showing on the other screen let me drag that over and there it is it has appeared so if I zoom in here, once again, now we have the column 
um, intersecting with the um, the steel. Let's see if I rotate here a little bit if it gives us one of the. And um, question is, is well, that's just the, the difference in the level lines of the top. So we can adjust where the top of the column comes to intersect this. I probably should have made this the one, the in, I should have made a level and called it the intersection point. So we kind of have to adjust the levels in order to get things to line up properly here. Let's just take a minute to see what we actually have as controls for this. So if I select that and go to edit type, remember we can control that beam depth and the beam width. So let's say we want to make this a little bit thicker. And I'll do this to exaggerate just to show you that we have this flexibility. I'm going to change that to um, uh, 20 inches. And I'll change the beam depth to 4 feet and click OK. And now we have a much more robust beam component. And remember, um, and then the other uh, change here would be to go to a front elevation or an elevation, like the south elevation. And I don't know why we're not seeing the beam. Let's try north elevation and try fine. There we go. We can see the beam and we can see this idea of the intersection point. And so for the top of the column to be right at the bottom of the beam, we need to make an adjustment to this. So, you know, for now I can just change this to 79 feet and we get a, um, an ability to make an adjustment depending on the column depth that we've selected. And I'm having a little bit of an intersection because of that idea that it's curved. We don't want it to actually touch right on that point. So let's go ahead and look at that back again in a 3D view. And now it's kind of rendering poorly because we haven't established that color white. So I'm going to go to Manage, and I'm going to create a material. And actually it's here, it's white. And I just need to make sure that it, let's go to Edit Color and change that white that came in that color to a much brighter, uh, completely white material. Click OK. And now we're rendering um, with a white beam. And we can do the same thing with the column. Actually, if I go in and edit this column, we need to establish this material as being white also. So um, let me just double click into it. And um, Select all the materials here. So it's so long now, the taper value is so long, it looks really weird. So I'm going to just multiple select all of the components and then give them the same material. And I got to just create it in the family so that it uh, copies out to the project. Load in the project. And now we have white columns and white beams. So I'll end this clip here, and then we'll just go back and place all of our columns in the next clip.